Glory, glory, glory to the name of the Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. People of God, good afternoon, good morning, good evening from wherever you are on the planet. I'm um, live with a beloved sister, Donnie, Donnie Mandy. She, she likes me to call her Don, not Donnie. But that's good. How are you, sister? I am well, glory to God. So I'm well. Okay, okay. It's so good and to hear. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. It's so good to to be with you in fellowship today. People of God, Donny is in in um, a fellowship with me from the Republic of Ireland, and um, the the Lord has been so kind to us. He has given us the privilege to be in fellowship with one another for miles apart, and it's uh, such a pleasant experience that we're having and i'm so glad to be alive today i'm so glad to be in this dimension of worship and fellowship with um um people who otherwise would have just been total strangers but um the lord is glorified in the in this season we've come to share this bond and it's very very interesting how god actually connects people even in this season so Donny Mandy, how is Ireland? Tell me, how is the atmosphere? Um, how's the atmosphere? Because for myself personally, obviously, I can only speak from and uh, those that have been fellowshipping lately. A lot of information being downloaded um, through dreams mm. and just coming together in fellowship. You know, many um, many buildings that they call churches have been shut down, but you know. We would usually gather together in a house. House fellowship has always been the way. Even the Lord told me about two years ago, he said, come out from amongst them, come out of them buildings, he said. And he told me himself, there would come a period of time, he said, when it would be illegal to fellowship in buildings. Wow. Wow. So, at this present time, we are fellowshipping online. We do Zoom, we do Messenger, you know, the WhatsApp. That's how we got it together. But um, from from what I can from what I can see from those I fellowship with, um, the Lord is is mightily shown what's happening this season, which is obviously um, the separation of the the wheat and the tear, mm. the rebuilding, the rebuilding of the the church, the real church, the rebuilding of Himself within us. The mm. temple is being raised up. Mm. You know, you know, wow. shown a lot in, in our dreams. Many of us in our dreams. It's, it's it's wonderful. It's wonderful what he's doing. You know, but I mean, we need to understand. People just think that it's a select few that are chosen to do this, or God only speaks to a few of us. God is willing to speak to everybody. But the point is, are your ears open? Are you willing? Have you got a willing heart to accept Him mm. in order for Him to flow? Hmm. Hmm. So the willingness of heart is very import important at this time. Absolutely. Absolutely. The willingness of our hearts. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You see, my brother, we we're in this we're in this um in this generation right now where, as you know, there's there's many of those who are so I will say so called men and women of God and they make others believe that there's only a select few who are chosen that God speaks to. Wow. And this brings about them being above everybody else. Let me tell you, we all have a function. And my hand on my body has a function. And my foot has a function. Mm. The body works best when it functions properly together. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You know? No. Yeah. Now, if, if you if you want to remember how we got talking, mm. you, you remember one of the first things you were sharing with me was about Zerubbabel. You remember? Yes. You said you were I having do. you were having a lot lots of dreams about yeah. the, the Zerubbabel, the great mm -hmm. mountain before Zerubbabel, the job at hand for Zerubbabel, and um, those two olive trees. You remember? 
Yeah. Now, uh, allow me to tell you that those words that you were saying right at that time were not just normal. Were not, you were not having a normal conversation with me. Uh, the, I'd never told you this before, but I, I, yes. I will tell you that you were the one that the Lord used to open a, 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 a door for, I, I want to say, one of the most pivotal revelations that the Lord has shared with me. God used Glory you to, to open the door. And what did you say? You just started Glory talking about God. Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel. Yes. Yeah, a couple, a couple of months ago, I yes. kept hearing the Lord saying, Zerubbabel, yes. over and over and, and over again. Yes. Yeah. The Lord began to tell me clearly that we've mm-hmm. come into the season for the restoration yeah. of the temple. Absolutely. And um, Zerubbabel had a mandate to build again, to restore that building. So he led a contingent of 50,000 Jews and they came out of Babylon and went down to the promised land. So there is a return from exile. Yes. And then concerning the activity surrounding the building of that um, temple, there was not one man that was um though Zerubbabel was spearheading the journey but you see in yes. Christ we must also activate the prophecy key for this Zerubbabel mm-hmm. mandate absolutely in Zerubbabel his anointing the anointing okay let me say it this way in the name of Jesus the the the, the Lord is raising a generation of people that will operate the Zerubbabel anointing Absolutely. That means the ones that will pioneer and spearhead the task of restoring the building of Christ again in the believer. Now, these ones are the coming. Elect. Beautiful. These ones are coming with um, dexterity in the use of their plumb line. They have a con- they have a constructive approach mm-hmm. to the teaching of Christ. And um, I also want to say is, is an apostolic ministry yes. that puts all hands on deck. Now, there's no superstar in this season. It, it's a community effort. So, there is no secluded agent that God will use. There is no <laughs> senior man of God or senior prophet or senior apostle. Absolutely. No, no, no. Every single believer that has been told a measure of faith has a responsibility to play a personal role in the task that is involved with the restoration of the temple. The restoration of the temple is the main task that the people of god are coming out of the exile they are exile in babylon to carry out so on that note we will want to help us see the foundation of the church i want to just call it the prophecy keys that define the revelation of jesus christ in the church that's something you have been wanting to share with me for a time now and um, I've seen you write about it I've seen you share about it I want to just give you the opportunity to break into it again the 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 wisdom that is in the fulfillment of scripture you know this is something we've lost we've we've actually been running a Christianity in Babylon that is void of the revelation of Jesus. I'm yeah. talking of the revelation of Jesus according to the scriptures of the prophets. And this has had us be um, def- redefine everything that Jesus stands for. We've redefined the church. We've redefined the gospel. We've redefined the work of the ministry. We have redefined the kingdom. Redefined the kingdom of God. We have redefined the brand 
called the church we have redefined the fruit of the spirit we have redefined the gift of the spirit we have redefined our worship and in all of it we have lost the the main responsibility that the lord has placed on our shoulder i'm talking about our right to bring fulfillment to the scriptures of the prophet sister donny spend some time to share with us what the lord is talking to you in this regard Absolutely. Um, well, regarding, regarding the river bell, if we go to the book of Haggai and we go to chapter 2, I'll just read it briefly. It says, Speak to the river bell, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow, he says, kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of kingdoms of the heathen, and I will overthrow chariots and their riders that are on them. Horses and their riders shall come down, every one of them by the sword of his wow, brother. And wow. in that day, said the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, said the Lord, mm. and will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, mm. said the Lord of hosts. When we look, you know, the signet ring back then, and, and even today, it's a sign of authority. It yes. was used instead of a signature. It was used as a signature. So what God is saying is, in this day, for those the remnant, the true elect, not not these, not these who standing up, you know, with their big private jets and all. We won't get into that because that's another topic for another day. That's not the remnant. I'm not saying none of them are not going to be used. I'm saying, do not be fooled by such things. Mm. Do not be fooled. God is going, God's basically using people and this remnant, he's using them. They have God's signet. That's exactly it. They have authority. And this is those who will rebuild the temple the way it was supposed to be. Mm. Bring it back to the days of old. This time it will stand still. And even the scriptures, they say the latter house will be greater than the former Mm. house. My God. This is the vision he has for this time. And that's what's happening. It's sifting through the wheat and the tear. And many people's eyes are going to be open. Many people are going to be shocked. Remember, it says even even these false false prophets will even fool the elect. Mm. You know? Mm. So he, he basically... Through a fellowship, I was praying. I was saying, "Lord, what are what are we speaking about tonight? What is it?" Straight away, He brought me to Second Corinthians, starting at chapter three. Mm. And when I read through it, it was just wow. Mm. And, and this this is what He's saying. He gives you an indication of what He's doing at this time. He explains very well in this scripture why people are blinded, how they are blinded, what mm. they need to become with the sight again, what they need to be healed. He can heal that sight, just like he did in in the scripture. He can do it. He's still doing it, you know? He's still in the business of healing sight. (laughs) Mm. You just have to call out to him, you know? So let's look at the scripture, my brother, and see what's there. That's 2 Corinthians 3, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 3 will start from even verse 3. Very powerful. Okay, let's come on. From there. um, I mean, all scripture is powerful, but this, for, for what he's shown in this day. Let's, let's, let's start from verse, verse 2. Yeah. So you read. You start from verse 2, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay. So what I, what I do, let me explain, is that I have every translation. I usually go into Bible Hub, and I have every different translation. It's, it, it breaks it down for other people who can also eat those who are only fresh okay they too can eat from this okay okay so so let's read so we're gonna read from what did you say you wanted to start from From verse two verse two okay the only letter of the recommendation we need is you yourselves Hmm. your lives are, are a letter written in our hearts Everyone can read it and recognize our good works amongst you. There's different, there is different versions of it. We can read different versions if you like. That's okay. no problem. Let's see, let's see that thing in the King James. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Read, you read the King James version and I'll read, you any, know, that, that amplified other one. version. Okay. Yeah. 
for those to understand you, also. You are our epistle written yeah. in our hearts, known and read by all men. Now, mm. Apostle Paul is actually talking about people. Yeah. But he is saying that we, the Church of Christ, have become yeah. the Apostle's epistle written yes. in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Known and read by all men. So the people of every nation must now see the church and read a message from God. Amen. A message of redemption and reconciliation that's coming out of God for the people of every nation. It's not in books now. This is in people. Apostle uh -huh. Paul is talking about people. You. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Verse 3 says, Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us written not with ink but by the spirit of the living god not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart you want to read this from another translation i will do yeah let me just move on here verse three sorry um, let me see. Yeah, verse 3, sorry. Uh, clearly you are a letter from Christ showing the results of our ministry amongst you. This letter is written not with pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living God. It is carved not on tablets of stone, but on human hearts. Hmm. Hmm. Human hmm. hearts. Hmm. Apostle Paul is saying something here. And I want, I want to believe that he, this is one of the things we must capture in the ministry of an apostle. Absolutely. We are capturing the ability to produce a people who are the law givers to their nations. You can see a Moses going up to the mountain and the hand of God in 3D writes the laws that will govern the nation of Israel. Yeah. Moses goes up to receive the letter, the commandment, the Ten Commandments, and he takes it down. Is to take it down to condition the people in the law of God. Apostle Paul is saying that we have become the Ten Commandments. We, the church, the church of Christ, we have become the letter that God has written to all men. <laughs> my god we 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 are an epistle of christ that means there's a statement that christ is using us to make the 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 statement that christ is using the church to make has been ministered to us we received who we are by revelation and the revelation is written not with ink but it's the spirit of the living God, the finger of the living God that ministers to us the, the message who we are to the nations. Yeah. We are an epistle. This is what we must capture. We are an epistle. God has actually written in our hearts a message that forms the theme of our hearts. You remember, scripture says, Guide your heart with all diligence, for out yes. of it flows the issues of life. Uh -huh. The Lord is telling us that he has, he has written a message, He has ministered to us in our hearts, so that out of our hearts we flow the message that we are to the nations. Out of us we flow the epistle that we are to all men. Hello? Do you see it? Does any other thing come to your mind? Does anything come to your mind, my sister? Me? Yes. Um, 
I know there's a, a Bible scripture also that says, So a man thinketh, so he shall be. So he is. You as know? a man thinketh in his heart. Mm-hmm. That Speak means our, our thought life is still captured in the things that God ministers to our spirits. Yeah, absolutely. Our thought life. The, the, the state of our heart, the writings of our heart, the finger of God, the spirit of God musing in our heart, buzzing in our heart, he actually, he actually in the long run confirms or it becomes an episode through our lives, through our conduct, through our deeds. is an episode from Christ to the nations of the world. It's a powerful place that we've come to find ourselves and verse 4 says and we have such trust through christ towards god not that i'm going on to verse 5 not that we are yeah. sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves but our sufficiency is of god our no, brother, let me read the other translation of okay. that also please beautiful beautiful if i may it says it is not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own our hmm. qualifications comes from god hmm. Hmm. another scripture comes to mind now where apostle paul says but we have this treasure in 18 vessels so that the <laughs> excellency of the power may be of god and not of us you see there's something powerful that god actually did that is empowered by the grace of god god actually lives in us god works in us god uses us to deliver his will we have become an agency that god walks through and as god walks through us christ is manifest in us each of us are coming with our individual manifestation of jesus christ all of us we have a particular part to play in the jesus story it's a beautiful story that will redefine the earth it's a beautiful story that will bring redemption to the world it's a beautiful story that will restore the earth back to factory setting default setting it's a beautiful story now this doesn't make us um, um people who become proud it doesn't make us people who feel that we are sufficient by ourselves. It doesn't make us people who feel that we have become an excellent breed by our self. It, make us, it makes us a people who are dependent on the helping, the moving, the ministry of the Spirit of God. It's another Bible scripture that comes to mind. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies yes, the call. He qualifies the Many call. Many can go and study scripture inside out, day and night. Just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Hmm. This is something God has ministered to me for weeks now. But yet, even though they knew the law inside out, they still, still couldn't capture Christ in the mm. flesh in front of them. Mm. So many can be qualified from man to preach scripture because they know scripture well. Mm. But there's a difference between someone that knows theology that way and someone who was called of God. Mm. There's a fire within those who have been called, those who have been taught by the Holy Spirit. There's mm. a difference. You can see the difference clearly. Mm. Clearly. Wow, that's a powerful thing you said there. And it just leads us to this verse 6. Verse 6 comes in very, it just comes to corroborate what you just said. You know, verse 5 speaks about our sufficiency as from God. And and to continue that, he said, Who has made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant? Mm. Ministers of the new covenant covenant not of the letter but of the spirit not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter kills but the spirit gives 
life. Hallelujah. And that's it there. That's, it that's right the difference there. between having fire preaching the gospel unto people. Wow. I'm going to going to study scripture without fire. There's a difference. That's, that stands there. You may be able to catch some bits of it, but you're captivating the story. But those who minister after being taught by the Holy Spirit, hmm. those are willing, they, 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 they have this fire within them that when it when it ignites and it comes out it stores up the spirit in others mm. and it causes scales to fall off mm. Mm. that's what it means to be a minister of the new covenant that means it's the, the spirit new. that powers yes. that ministration mm-hmm. is the spirit that powers that service is the spirit yeah. that powers that utterance is the spirit that powers that demonstration is the spirit that powers that life wow 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 he has made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant wow can we just give him a praise break for that we want to just thank him for making us able ministers of the new covenant wow wow sufficient as ministers of the new covenant wow thank you father glory to your name thank you thank you father thank you wow 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 glory 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 Amen. wow let's see verse 7 it says, but if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. He called the ministry of the old covenant the ministry of death. The ministry of the law, the man that is born of the spirit called it the ministry of death because it was written and engraved on stones. The ministry of the old covenant though it was captured in glory a dimension of glory it was engraved on stones in other words is in stone yeah is in Mm -hmm. the heart is in is the hand of god that wrote it (laughs) it was engraved on stone it was glorious something that has no heart stone Stone. something that's dead God wrote that ministry on stone and to capture that ministry to capture to receive that ministry it transmogrified Moses so much that Moses face began to shine like the Sun Amen. the ministry of death there was some dimension of glory in it that the children of israel had to put on a veil across their face they couldn't behold the dazzling light from the face of moses they couldn't behold the glory of god that was revealed in the face of moses they put a veil across their eyes to block out the elements the ministry of death now apostle paul is saying how will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious the ministry of the spirit that is ministered to us by the spirit in our hearts how will it not be more glorious 
the law the law is now written not on stones for us the law is written in our hearts so there is an outward flow of the message that God has spoke to the nations is coming from the recesses of our hearts how won't it be more glorious now let's look here at something my brother bring it on sister these, these stones okay they represent buildings today that they call church my god my god my god buildings that they call church today and then it says here how much more glorious will the ministry be that brings life hmm. that is the real church the new church the glorious church hmm. it is the latter house hmm. that is built within us so much more glorious so much more glorious hmm. Hmm. you see today i did a a quick research on the doctrine of balaam mm. and i realized that is part of the things that some of the churches that jesus wrote to imbibed they followed after the deeds mm -hmm. of the doctrine of balaam they put a stumbling block before the people even yeah. in the time of the spirit they again put the law engraved on stones before the people mm. and by yeah. so doing they made the people become weak before their enemies and they made the people incur the wrath of god it's a terrible place that we've been in submitting to the ministry of death the ministry of death we have submitted again to the law and we've abandoned the gospel of the grace of god that makes us temples of the lord that makes us ministers able ministers of the new covenant that makes us deliver deliverers of nations mm -hmm. dispensers of eternal life that makes us the light of the world that same ministry that makes us carriers of the glory of god yeah. has been subjugated for the ministry of death Indeed. that is engraved on stone what you said just now is very powerful written and engraved on stones can we take the moment to repent can we take the moment for inter to intercede for the people of god who have submitted to this ministry of death let us intercede on their behalf let us deploy the office of an intercessor when intercessors rise sister the nations are saved when intercessors rise the nations are delivered when intercessors rise people who will receive the promise of a revival shall receive it let us intercede let's remind the lord of his blood let's remind him of the blood that he shed let's remind him of the price that he paid to save us from sin let us stand in the gap for those who have again submitted to the ministry of death let's ask god to have mercy these ones are the trees of righteousness these ones are the plantings of the lord 
these ones they will still carry the glory of god let's ask the lord to have mercy let's ask him to have mercy even if they are bought into the fading glory that has faded away let's ask him to have mercy 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 let's plead the blood that speaks better things than the blood of abel let's plead the blood of jesus let's plead the blood of yahushua amashiach let's plead the blood again so that jesus can revamp his work he can re-establish his work he can continue his work what is the best part of his work the best part of his work is he starts when the veils are removed when the veil when the veil is removed let's go on to verse 9 let's go on to verse 9 for if the ministry of condemnation had glory the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory for even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels i want you to read 10 from your own translation yes hold on i'll just switch it over it says in fact that false glory was not glorious at all compared with the overwhelming glory of the new way wow 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 the ministry of the spirit is even more glorious scripture says the glory that excels that means the glory increases that means the glory is it is it, it transforms it's transforming yeah. in its state it's becoming brighter yeah. and brighter the glory is evolving yeah. in brightness that's the glory that we carry that's the glory that the church of christ is born to bear that's the glory it far exceeds the glory that wrote the ministry of death and condemnation the glory that is involved in the preaching of righteousness the glory that is involved in the preaching of righteousness this my sister is what we must be pressing into because this is the glory that excels wow remember christ told us that we would out see the things that he done wow wow remember that yes wow wow he said greater works than this shall you do because i go to be with the father jesus 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 verse 11 he says for if what is passing away was glorious what remains is much more glorious what remains is much more glorious the spirit of the lord in the heart of men ministering to us the ministration of the spirit is much more glorious i want you to celebrate across the nations is much more glorious what remains there is hope for a better world with what remains there is hope for eternal salvation with what remains there's a brighter world for the nations of the world with what remains what remains is much more glorious therefore since we have such hope we use great boldness of speech since we have much hope we use great boldness of speech mind you apostle paul is saying boldness of speech many people will read this like pride don't you think so sis indeed they would and you know may may god help them because they're in bondage because 
because pride is a bondage also. Mm. We must remember that. And if we continue on, we'll see why they would look at it that way. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. The boldness of the believer is predicated on the hope that is infused by the ministration of the spirit that is heart deep i want to say it again the boldness of the believer is predicated on the hope that is infused by the ministration of the spirit that is heart deep is something that is activated in the heart that generates a hope that supplies boldness of speech wow 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 the righteous are as bold as a lion i want to encourage people out there especially those that are people of no consequence people that are insignificant in the scheme of things people that will automatically be written off and when they are saying something with audacity based on the revelation of jesus that they have captured uh, people tend to call them proud or rebellious or rude i want to encourage you i want to tell you to set up a frown on your face step 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 set a, 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 a green in your eyes and look in the face of them look in their faces and, and show them they are God. Look in their faces and tell them this is your Lord. Do not be afraid. Do not be shaken. I want to strengthen you. I want to encourage you. And I want to comfort you. They have called you names. They have abused you. They have maligned you. Let yeah. the hope that you are seeing by the ministration of the spirit that has hit your heart, let it drive your every, every deed. Let it drive the things that you say and allow the Lord to vindicate you. People of God who have come into a strange time and it's they that know their God that shall be strong and do exploit. The times surrounding the building of the latter house are the times of great shaking. God is going to shake the nations. He's going to shake the heavens as he's doing. He's doing that so that the desire of the nation shall come. Look at yourself again and realize that so long as you are an able minister of the new covenant, you have the right to become yourself the desire of the nations. Because Christ, the desire of the nations, lives on your inside. Do not allow them to put a mule on your mouth. Be bold and speak it the way the Lord has put it in your heart. Say it the way the Lord has put it in your heart. Do not be afraid of anybody. Do not be afraid of he that can kill your body but cannot touch your yes. soul. Do not be afraid of man. Speak it as the Lord says it. The Lord gives you courage in the name of Jesus. Amen. He says unlike... Okay. Sorry, my brother, let me show you something. Okay. Let me show you something. Bring it on, bring it on. Sis. Many people wonder where the boldness comes from. Okay. If we jump on to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and it says this For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Okay? okay. That's the first one I want to say. And then when we jump down, and it says then on number four, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself. Mm. The word edify is to gain knowledge. When you have a relationship with God and you speak to God, you can download information mm. from heaven. Mm. It is true your relationship through the spirit not mm. through the letter but through the spirit because we know 
that there is a such thing as two baptisms. Baptism for repentance, which is obviously water, and then the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Not, not baptism of the letter. Doesn't say anything about knowing the letter. My God. We've just learned that the letter is dead. My Edification God. Edification comes through, through the Spirit, through speaking My unto God. God. So that clearly says that there's the information that God can incede in us aside the Bible, aside the scripture. And this same spirit, this same edification is how John the Revelator got the revelations. Mm. That's the boldness. Hmm. Hmm. This it's powerful. God. This powerful. So so long as we sustain our vertical alignment, so mm-hmm. long as we speak to God. Wow. 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 There's some there's some light in what you said. Very, very intense. So long as we sustain our fellowship with the spirit. Yeah. Boldness. Boldness. Wow. 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 Wow, it's so powerful what you said here. Because I didn't think about it in that way. God can actually speak speak to us. You know, I'm, I'm beginning to see it this way. I think it is us that really do not know the extens- extensiveness of the scriptures. <laughs> the, the Apostle Paul calls it... Mind you, I didn't say the extensiveness of the letter. I said yeah. the extensiveness of the scripture. Apostle Paul calls it the unsearchable riches of Christ. Amen. Is vast. Is vast. You see, when God speaks to us, whatever God does to reveal Jesus in us is tied back to the scriptures not the letter of course though the scripture has letters so we must now be able to distinguish between the letters and the scriptures (laughs) because one of the most one of the vital ways to test spirits is to trace everything that is done and said by people who are who claim to be inspired by the spirit we must trace them back to the scriptures of the prophets. Absolutely. Remember um, Paul and the Jews at Berea. They searched the scriptures all day to find out if what Paul was saying was true. <laughs> Paul was not telling them stories about... Uh, uh, it was not telling them scriptures of the prophet stories. Paul was speaking by this, excuse me, by the spirit. Paul was breaking them through their day to day runnings as believers. And Paul was guiding them through the uncharted course of scripture fulfilled in Christ. But you see, it took the wisdom of those people. And the scripture describes them as noble people, the noble Jews. He took the wisdom from them to go and trace the character of this individual called Paul. So this is a skill that I want to advise us to capture. God wants that we test the spirits. We don't just take everything that everybody is saying. It is important we pass it through the test. Pass it through the test. Yes, God can speak to us 
He can speak to us out of the letter. He is God. He is sovereign. But much of what God says is traceable back to the scriptures of the prophets. This is why we must come, we must come as people who have captured the, the use in the gift of interpretation. We must be able to interpret the times and the seasons. This is one of the things that was missing in the temple that Zerubbabel restored. You remember after Zerubbabel built the temple, the glory did not sit on it. And God now began yeah. to inspire prophet Ezra, who went to go and pick some things that were needed to sustain the service period, the ministry period, the worship life of the temple. And part of that that Ezra restored is called the Umim and the Tunim. Those were, those were some things that the priest puts in his garment that helps him to determine or divine or, or to define or to discern the will of God. This is, has to do with the uh, orchestration of the wisdom of God at this time. A generation of people that understand the times and the seasons. Like Daniel, who said he came to understand by the books. Daniel understood by the scriptures the times for the end of the captivity of the people of Israel. Daniel operated with that dimension of wisdom while we are looking at right now. Is the wisdom yeah. that captures interpretation of scriptures. It captures whatever anybody is doing or the times and the seasons of our present day happening in the light of interpretation of scriptures. So it's a very powerful prophecy tool that we must begin to capture and develop even at this time so that our, our testimony of Jesus can be grounded. Our testimony of Jesus can be, can be loud. Our testimony of Jesus can be remarkable, even at this time. Such a powerful thing you shared with me, Sister Mandy, is, is something we must also meditate on. And, and um, I'm sure a lot more will come out of this light that you just dropped. The Lord will help us control it. Amen. Amen. He now says, unlike Moses, I'm in verse 13, who put a veil over his face. Now we're, we're coming to the crux of the matter. Moses yes. put a veil over his face. My God. My God. Moses put a veil over his face. Ha! Ah, Kadata. Lebla Palagasizia. Moses put a veil over his face. So, this is a powerful thing that Moses did. We understand in verse, verse 2 Corinthians verse 4 and verse 4, Scripture says, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose mind the God of this world, God of this age has blinded. The God of this age has blinded. The God of the age is the one that blinds the eyes of people so that they don't see. But the Scripture is owing this attitude to Moses. Moses put yeah. a veil over his face. <laughs> the, the, the minister of the old covenant put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing. It's important for us to look steadily at the end of what was passing it's important for us to look steadily at the glory the glory is passing it is important for us to look steadily at what is passing <laughs> ah stay with me stay with me there's something here moses climbs up to the mountain and he tells the lord show me your glory and the lord says no no, anybody that sees my glory will die. He says, if I found favor in your sight, Lord, show me your glory. And the Lord gave... Let's go to that scripture so that I will show you something that happened there. Yeah. It is Exodus 33. We are looking at somebody who... Oh, my God.
my god exodus 33 i think it's verse 12 let's start from verse 12 Coming eh? Yeah. I'm coming, just hold on. Okay, good, good. Let's read from verse 12. It's going to be a long read, but I will not be explaining. I will just read down. So you see what was happening. You see what I'm seeing. From verse 12, I want to read it down to verse 22. Ten verses. So let's go now in the name of Jesus. Then Moses said to the Lord, See. You say to me, bring bring up these people, but ye have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in your sight, show me your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight. And consider that this nation is your people. And he said, my, pre- my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, for all the people who are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, Please show me your glory. It's powerful here, we must see. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Okay. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, Here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So shall it be while my glory passes you see the glory is passing the glory Uh is passing that i put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while i pass then i will take away my hand and you will see my back but my face shall not be seen (laughs) okay you see when Moses asked the Lord to show him the glory God caused that glory to pass when you see the passing glory something happens there must be the delivery of information. Amen. So long as Moses caught the passing glory, Moses received the revelation of the first five books of Moses. He received the revelation of the Torah. Why? He just captured the passing glory. Do you get what I said? Yes. The glory passed by him and he saw the back of the Lord. But in his heart, the ministration was written. If you read down here, the next thing, what did God say? And the Lord said to Moses, cut two tablets of stone like the first ones. And I will write on the tablets the word that are the first tablets which you broke. Hello? The download of the epistle on the tablets of stone was on the platform of Moses' revelation of the passing glory. When the glory passed by Moses, Moses saw the back of God. 
the next thing that Moses, the instruction he received was the Ten Commandments, the restoration of the Ten Commandments. That happened on the platform of the passing glory. Now, let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 so that I will tie it with what I'm just showing to you here. Are you there? Are yeah. you there? Unlike Moses, unlike Moses, unlike Moses, that means God doesn't want to do that same thing that Moses did. What did Moses do? He put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not stead, look steadily at the end of what was passing. God's agenda is to give the children of Israel, which is us, the same experience he gave Moses. When Moses saw his glory, Moses received the Ten Commandments. Moses was supposed to repeat the same thing to the children of Israel. They are supposed to see the glory that was radiant on his face and the law will be written in their own hearts. But what did Moses do? Moses covered his eyes so that the children of Israel will not behold the glory that passed. Are you with me? Absolutely. The children of Israel could not behold the glory that passes. But the glory that fades away is not the glory we are dealing with now. The Lord does not want to blind our eyes. He doesn't want to veil our eyes. The Lord wants to unveil our faces so that we can see this glory that excels. So that in his light, we may see light. He wants us to behold him so that all the plans that he has will be downloaded in our hearts. Amen. The ministry of the Spirit is predicated on our revelation of the glory. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> that ministry of the Spirit is tied to our revelation of the glory. The ministry of the Spirit. Remember, the revelation of Jesus when John saw Jesus, John received the ministry of the Spirit. The book of Revelation was the ministry of the Spirit. The book of Revelation was the product of the ministry of the Spirit that John captured when John saw the revelation of Jesus. Apostle Paul's ministry was the product of the ministry of the Spirit he received. His ministry to the Gentiles was the product which is encapsulated in all the books that he wrote. All the books that Apostle Paul wrote was on the pedestal of the revelation of the glory. God, does, God no longer wants to veil his face like Moses did. God no longer wants to veil his face to prevent the children, his children, from seeing the glory that passes. Because he has done away with the glory that passes. Now, he wants his children to see his face so that they can enjoy the surplusness that is in... One lesson, the my brother, that we cannot miss from the story that you just shared regarding Moses. God did not give Moses. He didn't dress it up the way Moses wanted it to be. But Moses did not stumble. He didn't have a stamp about he didn't act childish if he had have said well it's not the way i wanted it to be and left it he wouldn't have got hold of that glory he wouldn't have been able to partake in it he wouldn't have been able to experience it hmm. today many people ask god they pray to god and god sends somebody but because it's not packaged the way they had imagined it to be instead of allowing it to be the way god sent it to be they miss their blessing they miss the revelation hmm. 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 Moses could have easily missed it could have easily missed it hmm. Hmm. wow 
And that's exactly what you are just saying. What you are saying corroborates with the next verse. It says, But their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. I want you to read um, verse 14 from your version. Well done. But the people's minds were hardened. And so to this day, whenever the Old Covenant is being read, the same veil covers their minds so they cannot understand the truth. Wow. And this veil can be removed only by believing in Christ. Wow. 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 So we must also celebrate God here. That he has given us the ability to see the truth when we study the Old Covenant. Because that's how we've been able to understand where we are. That's how we've been able to give the right interpretation of what God wants. We've been able to see the story of Zerubbabel, how the children of Israel came out of Babylon and went to restore the temple. We've been able to understand the three waves of the flow of restoration from Zerubbabel to Ezra, then to Nehemiah. We've been able to re- receive apostolic designs and specifications with the plumb line. We've been able to master the use of this the learning of this um, knowledge of God by revelation. We've been able to see how that God wants to destroy the golden cows. We've been able to cut out uh, modules that will help us go into the promised land. How we can now restore faith in the believers. How we can call them out and stand at the entrance. We can see the best response to Aaron. We can see the 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 descendants of levi consecrating themselves separating themselves we can we can see the place of fasting right there we can see how god can still use the people that have been meddled with their practice in babylon we can see how god can use the the blind people whose minds are blind today because in christ the veil is taken away we can read the the letter we, sorry, we can read the, the old covenant and read it in this, read it by the Spirit and receive interpretation in Christ. We can see how that we are coming into somewhere we've never been before. And we are reading Joshua chapter 3, verse 3, and we can recognize that we need to set our eyes open and our ears open so that we can see the ark of the covenant moving. We can now uh, um, see the Levites carrying it. We can now go after it. We can change our position. So we can even pray the will of God, even now. So I think it's something we need to thank God for, that he has fed us with so much light this season. I'm sure it's not just partaking to us. It's not just particular about us, our well-being, our ministry. No, God is actually using, raising a new generation of leaders that will begin to speak life, speak this ministration of the Spirit to men to present this epistle of christ to men to activate the ministry of jesus christ in his capacity to proclaim the recovering of sight to the blind it's a powerful um, office that the lord has given to us and i think for this we must be glad we must be glad his spirit is working in us and is giving us witness that we are a part of him we belong to him we can communicate f- to him we can receive information from him we Absolutely. can receive revelation from him there's so much that excitement that this gives to show that we are alive in him we are part of him he's flowing through us and you, you see it's such a powerful um um um, um, um is it a feeling now or is it a being it's a powerful being to to be sufficient to be able ministers of the new covenant an incredible experience we could also still want to pray 
for people whose mind are still veiled till this very day people who have submitted to the ministry of condemnation people who have submitted to the ministry of death people who have rallied round stones people who have rallied round these denominations people who have not turned to christ so that the veils will be taken i think the need for us to brace an intercession for them is also it, it cannot be over over emphasized we need to pray for these ones that the lord can prick their hearts and turn them around above all that the lord will take away the veil the veil is taken away when they turn to christ so it is god that turns people back to him is the one that causes us to approach him so i believe it's important for us to pray that god will turn the hearts of people that are lost in babylonian worship turn their hearts oh god turn their hearts oh god take away the veil in the name of jesus take away the veil yes, take away the veil amen wow wow glory to god glory 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 to god you know my brother when we look at solomon's temple okay and we had the outer court the inner court and the most holy many people pray and you read praying on one of these three levels hmm. praying from an outer court the inner court and the most holy hmm. you can only get in through on the opposite side of the veil on the opposite side of that court when you truly have a relationship with Christ hmm. somebody if we continue to read on you'll see if we're ministering this and somebody doesn't understand this it's a sign that they are perishing hmm. as harsh as it sounds it's because they're still on the outside Hmm. When we look at our bodies, we have an outer court, which is our physical body. Yeah, kind of. Our inner court is our soul. Hmm. And our most holy is obviously our spirit. Hmm. In Solomon's temple, there was the winding stairs. When we look at our DNA under a microscope, what does it look like? A winding stairs. Hmm. 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 The most holy isn't an untouchable place if you are willing to open up. Hmm. The and most holy, say that again, say that again. I like to write it in the hearts of people. Say it again. The most holy, the most yeah. holy is not an untouchable place if it's you are willing place. to open up. Yeah. That's a quote. And we know it's a quotable quote. This veil. Yeah. This veil that we spoke of. This is religious mindedness. Mm. And let's look back. It says there. That even the reading, without truly knowing Christ, without truly having a revelation of Christ, you can't enter in there. You can't. You can't enter into. You can't go into that level. You can't. Shut <laughs> We look today at many people today who are in bondage to the religious spirit mm. and they're wearing tallits and prayer shawls. We have been delivered from that and yet you still want to go back to that. Mm. Why? Why do you want to go back to that? You're told to be like Christ. You're told to be Christ in flesh. Mm. You're not told to be Moses-like. Mm. It's very sad. 
It's very sad. So obviously many of many of us came to a religion that was not about Christ, it was about Moses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who came into a religion, mm -hmm. took up a form of godliness and denied the power to fellowship with God, spirit to spirit. Yeah. And we can look at these I'll say so-called priestly garments, these Levitical clothing. Christ didn't wear any of that. When the soldiers came to arrest Christ, nobody in that in that garden stood up, no, stood out, shall I say. They didn't stand out. Christ wasn't standing there in big Levitical clothing because they had to ask for him. They all looked very similar. They were all just normally dressed. It's this religious mindedness, this veil that comes from the covenant that was written on stones, this dead, this, this glory that has passed. It is this that has brought about the way the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had that blindedness because yes. they couldn't recognize Christ in the flesh. Mm. And this is how we can know that we are truly saved. If Christ is truly in you, then he can recognize himself in somebody else. Yes. So you will be able to, somebody won't even have to tell you what their function is in the body of Christ. You will know, it'll be inside you, you can recognize him. Yes, deep, we call on to deep. You can recognize. You know, many people will go to Spain on the holidays, go all over the world. And when they're sitting there amongst many other foreign people from different countries, and in a the distance they hear their own native tongue being spoke, they understand, they recognize their own. And it's the same for those who are truly born again, who are truly Christ in flesh. Hmm. It'll always come back to Christ. It'll always come back. Always goes back to him. You know, today it's very sad and we see many people standing up on many pulpits and, and, and the sad thing is they're going to perish and not just by their own doings, but because the congregation, God spoke to me before and he said, do you know, he said, my child, I will reconcile many of those ministers who are preaching prosperity, he said to me. I said, okay, he says. But the congregation I will hold responsible. I said, Father, why? He said, because they clap loud, loudest only when the good word comes. But when it's a word of direction, they never want to know about it. Mm. It's very sad. Again, mm. it's a veil. It's a veil. It's a veil. We must understand the old covenant was all about getting to the, the land flown of milk and honey. The New Testament is about the spirit. Mm. It's about your spirit getting to the land flown of milk and honey. That's getting to heaven. Yeah. That's the, bringing heaven to earth. That's what it is. Showing people that the kingdom can be here. Faith. Many are led to believe that when, when you have someone in ministry who has a well-known name, you know, a household name, and they have, have, have like jets and fancy cars and so forth, that these people are definitely of God. Christ could have had all of that here on earth, but he said, my, my kingdom isn't here. My mm. world isn't here. That's like my riches is not of this world. Mm. If God in, allows anyone of his true elect to come with money that true elect knows not to hold on to that for themselves we know what the money That's is for. for Gucci clothes we know what the money is for yes. 
is for building up communities. Mm. It's for building up communities. Repairing cities. That's what scripture says. Raising up yes. from our desolation. Absolutely. Making the crooked paths straight. Mm. Showing the people. Men being we broken talk, hearted people. Is it in, it's in the book of, let me see, I'll flick you here. Oh, it's, it's not Jeremiah, I think it's. Da, 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 Call da. the scripture. I'm trying to. He's talking about the horses coming and they're going up north. You know the scripture I'm talking about. It's not, uh, it's not in Ezekiel. Zachariah. It's in the book of Zechariah and it talks about the mountains. Okay. You know that's the, one? the great mountain before Zerubbabel. Yes. Th- that's it. I think that's in Haggai, but there's Is also another Zechariah scripture and it talks about two mountains. Is it Zechariah? And the four? horse riders will come in between the two mountains. Okay. You know this scripture, my brother. Let me find this. I'm trying to find it here. See, I'm good with scriptures, but I'm not good at their addresses. <laughs> mm, yeah, I know. I know. You said that before. But it talks about the two mountains and how the horse riders will come from between them. That right there is the Zerubbabel anointing, which we were talking about. It's talking about dividing the wheat and the tare. These two mountains, one represents the kingdom of God, which is coming here on earth, when the remnant are rising up, which they are at the minute. They're rising up now. So many of them still don't know who they are. He's rising them up. And the other mountain represents the government bodies that are in this world, the corrupt that's within this world. That's exactly what that is. Bear with me. I think it's Zechariah chapter 6. See, I'm just after getting on it. Glory to God. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yes. And it talks about, you know, and, and, and this, again, this talking about the body of Christ. Many people today, when, when a prophet is given a hard word and they speak and it comes across very stern, it's the spirit that stores up. And I myself, I, I, people that message me, I'm like, you know, you were speaking very angry, God, and they start throwing scripture about God saying not being angry. Every different season brings about something else. And even these horses that we speak of, that's in the book of Zechariah in chapter 6, spoke about in the book of Revelation also. And one of them does settle God's wrath in the north. If you